do is take a brief moment and describe to you the working principles behind a pulse jet engine and what's the difference between a pulse jet and a ramjet engine and then a scramjet engine. First of all, the pulse jet engine, which you see here, works by having a valve system in the front. What that does is it allows the pressure generated from the explosion of the air fuel mixture done by originally the spark plug to get it started allows the pressure to go one direction so that way the valve shut keeps that pressure from coming out the forward end over here like a valveless pulse jet would do which are much less efficient so with the valve system what happens is you get detonation a pulse of that detonation now runs all the way down the exhaust tube right at the end of the exhaust tube you're going to get a reversal of flow because as that flow of energy comes out of the tube it's creating a vacuum inside of the tube that vacuum is creating a low density or low air pressure area and that's going to do one of two things. First of all, in flight, because you've now created a lower pressure behind the valves than what's being forced in in the front because of the air pressure coming in because you're in motion, the valves will now be able to open due to the resistance reduction behind them. Since the pressure is now being forced out and creating a vacuum left over inside the tube, the valves will open much easier since the force coming in is greater than the force inside the tube, allowing air to mix with fuel and enter your ignition chamber. Due to the pressure generated by the combustion that takes place inside of this, that pressure will shut those valves, directing almost all of that energy out the exhaust tube. And because of Newton's law, we now have a force going this direction, which will give us a force going in this direction, which moves our engine forward. And that's how a pulse jet engine creates its thrust. So I'd really quickly like to discuss the other process here that's taking place that keeps the engine running. There's an ignition process taking place because you use the spark plug originally to get the ignition to take place, but after that you remove the spark plug wires and so the rest of it's all taking place through the cadence effect. When the fire goes all the way down the tube, a little bit of it because of the draw back in gets sucked back up into your ignition chamber. That little bit of fire that it holds inside of there will reignite the gas and the air mixture that you've provided through the intake and create the second propulsion debt wave. And that detonation wave comes out back down the tube, creates a cadence effect which will once again draw a bit of that back up, ignite your next pulse, and that's why it's called a pulse jet engine because of this constant pulsing back and forth that takes place inside of it to keep the system ignited. Now right at about the point where the pulse jet engine starts to fail is where a ramjet engine now becomes capable of running because a ramjet won't function until you've hit about 0.5 Mach or half the speed of sound. And if you can get a pulse jet engine up to about half the speed of sound, you can now convert through the g-forces being applied against the cone, you can now make a front end of this that would basically change its form slightly as it gets going faster and faster due to g-forces, which begins to work a lot more like a ramjet engine in its function. So that way you could use a pulse jet to get you going, and as it started to overwhelm the valves in velocity, and, and as the velocity started creating air pressure that started to overwhelm the valves in the pulse jet, the valves themselves folding backwards due to the air pressure creates the same cone design that you see in a ramjet because the valves were stuck up like this and as the pressure hits them they start to fold back. Now if you design that just right, the area that they create right at their lips around the outside edge can become basically the same area as the ramjet design, hopefully allowing an engine that we could build here that's going to convert in mid-flight from a pulse jet to a ramjet allowing us to go from 200 and some odd let's say 20 to 50 miles an hour up to Mach 4, Mach 5 